Have you seen the movie Castaway? Castaway stars Tom Hanks as a FedEx employee who's been stranded on a deserted island for four years after his plane crashes in the Pacific Ocean. A blood-smeared volleyball, which makes the appearance of a face, becomes his only friend. He names it Wilson, and he talks to it for the four years he's on the island. He makes a makeshift raft to finally escape the island with Wilson strapped in as they go through a horrible storm together. In the most dramatic scene in the entire movie, uh, Tom Hanks wakes up after the storm clears to realize that Wilson's no longer on the makeshift raft. So he jumps into the sea and he tries to save Wilson only to realize he's too far. Tom Hanks cries out, Wilson! And if you have a heart, you feel bad for the guy. Like, you might even tear it up a bit. And then you realize he literally risked his life to save a volleyball with blood-smeared eyeballs on it. It's ridiculous. In an age where we're more connected than ever, people actually report feeling more disconnected. 72% of people report feeling lonely or isolated, even when surrounded by family and friends. What's interesting is that Tom Hanks was forced into isolation where we've created our own. In fact, I'd argue we created our own Wilsons. Don't believe me? Look at your phones. Look at the way you talk and interact with them. Look at the way we constantly keep them close within arm's reach, either in our hands or in our pockets. Look at the way we freak out if it looks like we're going to drop it or lose it. We've created our own Wilsons. So why is it when we're more connected than ever, people actually feel more isolated? Well, for one, technology has increased at an incredibly rapid rate, invading every aspect of our lives. It's in our cars, it's in our bedrooms, and it even invades our mental space. Also, technology has made it so that we have an abundance of options often overwhelming our sense of what to do next and our sense of what to choose. So what drives this crazy behavior? What drives us to create best friends out of phones? In a word, intimacy. Intimacy is the same human desire that drives you and I to create phones out of best friends. It's the same human desire that drives Tom Hanks to create a best friend out of a cell phone. Now, I'm not talking about the sexual kind of intimacy. I'm talking about the desire to be known, to be seen, and to interact on a deep level. So what is intimacy? Well, modern day definitions state that intimacy is a closeness or familiarity in a relationship. But to truly know what intimacy means, we have to go back to its roots. Intimacy is derived from the Latin root intima, meaning inner or innermost. But I'd like to give you a simple, clean, and easy to remember way uh, to define intimacy. And that's this. Intimacy is in, to, me, see. That's seeing into me. That's a union between the seer and the seen requiring both. Now this requires a level of vulnerability, but the rewards are certainly there. The greater the depth of intimacy, the stronger the relationship. Oftentimes the person that you're most intimate with is the person that you have the best relationship with. That's your spouse, that's your best friend, that's your parents. Every human relationship requires intimacy, and without it, it simply fades or declines. As an entrepreneur, I find the greatest lack of intimacy in business. The volleyball is a product of business. That cell phone in your pocket is a product of business. Where you're watching this from right now is a product of business. But let me ask you a question. When you go to work, do you truly feel like you can be seen as yourself? No. 
So why does this matter? It matters because in an age with abundance of options, it's the brand that represents me, the brand that I connect to is the one that I buy into. In short, it's a brand that sees me that I choose. Today, organizations, businesses, and entrepreneurs that prioritize intimacy will become the default choice in the new intimacy economy. Intimacy allows you to become the obvious choice in a world full of me too's. So what if intimacy is the missing link? What if intimacy is the missing link to attract the greatest number of customers that feel like they can't live without what it is that you sell? What if intimacy is the missing ingredient as an artist or an entrepreneur to make a name for yourself and be known when there's so many others doing the exact same thing? What if intimacy is the missing principle to not only ensure that your team performs the best that they can, but that people actually want to work with you. I'd like to share a story how I stumbled across this discovery. That's a picture of me when I was 28 years old. It's amazing how we can smile through some of the most difficult periods in our life. Six months prior, my dad had a double lung transplant surgery. He had already said goodbye to the world. He had an autoimmune disease that rendered his lungs useless, but the doctor said that he required a surgery emergency in order to save his life. When the doctors cracked open his chest on the operating table, they said he would be dead within 48 hours had he not had surgery that day. Stressed out living in another state, I relocated back to my parents' home with the intention of helping out around the house. And it was in that house that my business was formed. Tired of going to networking events that just felt salesy and uh, leaving like I didn't feel a genuine connection with anybody I met, I decided to start my own. I created a dinner for entrepreneurs. Instead of hosting it at some venue, I invited people into my parents' home. Instead of having finger foods, we sat down together we had a delicious four-course meal provided by a private chef. In addition to asking professional questions, I had each person answer personal questions. Questions like, what's one thing that no one here knows about you? And what's something you're so embarrassed about that you wouldn't want to tell your mom? The answers were incredible. From one mother sharing for the first time that she actually had two children, one that she had to give up for adoption at birth and she hadn't seen since. To one woman sharing about on her first date, she was twerking and she ended up throwing up all over her date. <laughs> and how that date became her husband. <laughs> the insights that we received from this entire experience allowed us to genuinely connect with each other to truly feel supported, and to grow each other's businesses. Now, my business, Entrepreneur's Dinner, caters to an international audience. We're expanding to different cities around the country. And intimacy is a universal principle that allows my business to become the obvious choice in a world full of me too's. That's intimacy. And my dad, he's recovering well. In fact, this week he's on Capitol Hill sharing his story with members of Congress and doctors so that he can leave a legacy for others as well. So sure, it worked for my business, but I wondered if it worked for other big businesses. Now, most of you know the story of Apple. What most of you don't know is the story of Mike Marcula. Who's Mike Marcula? He was Apple employee number three behind Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. In fact, Steve Wozniak said that Mike Marcula was more critical to their success than both Steve Jobs and he were. So what did he do? Mike Marcula helped to manage the company. He hired Apple's first CEO, 
and he made a personal investment of $250,000 in exchange for a 30% stake. That 30% stake became worth over $200 million at the time of their IPO. But that wasn't his biggest contribution. Mike Marcula's biggest contribution was the Apple marketing philosophy that he wrote when they were just becoming incorporated. The Apple marketing philosophy laid the groundwork for how Apple would be marketed for the next three decades. The first point, Apple would have an intimate connection with their customers' feelings. He wrote, Apple would understand our customers' feelings better than anybody else in the business. For the rest of his career, Steve Jobs became obsessed with understanding his customers' needs and desires better than anybody else, period. Now, MBLM, a company that measures brand intimacy, has some really interesting insights. MBLM found that uh, brands with a high level of intimacy actually could charge their customers up to 20% more if they felt a level of intimacy with their brand. Number one on their report was Apple. So is it any wonder why Apple, number one on the most intimate brands, with the ability to charge their customers more, is the most profitable company in the entire world? I'd argue it's because Steve Jobs and Mike Marcula understood the importance of intimacy in order to grow their businesses. And it's not just Apple. Uh, take a look at Lyft, the ride-sharing app. Their slogan is, your friend with a car. Encouraging people to ride in the front seat with them, like a friend, rather than in the back seat like a fare. It's intimacy. And did you guys hear about the big change at Facebook? They have a brand new mission to bring the world closer together. Mark Zuckerberg announced in an interview with CNN, he said, it's not simply enough to connect. We need to bring the world closer together. So if Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg think that intimacy is hugely important, it might be something you should consider too. So yes, it works for big businesses, but what about artists? What about individual entrepreneurs? What about the people who they are their business? Let's take a look at one of the best performing artists in the world. Now, I don't hide my love for Beyonce. Um, <laughs> I think she's beautiful inside and out. Uh, she's one of the best performers in the entire world. And she has this representation, this embodiment of women's empowerment that women just go crazy when she releases new music because of the pride for her. Um, in her album, Lemonade, Beyonce detailed the struggles with the biggest challenge she's ever faced in her life, being cheated on by her husband, Jay-Z. Now, the album is this beautiful combination of, of jealousy, of pain, of confusion, and frankly, all-out rage as she talks about getting a bat and bashing it up against a car. It's, I imagine, incredibly challenging to be so open with millions and millions of people. Most people would feel like that's something you wouldn't talk about. But for Beyonce, it had the opposite effect. In fact, Lemonade became the best-selling album in the entire world off the strength of her intimacy. And off the strength of Lemonade, she turned that into a top 20 musical grossing tour of all time. It's no wonder why the beehive, as they're called, uh, Beyonce's followers, think that she's beautiful inside and out. Because they see into her, and she allows them to see into it. And it's not just because Beyonce's a big artist. Ellen DeGeneres, before she was a popular TV show host, used to have a show called Ellen. Um, in 1997, Ellen became the first lead for a TV network series that came out as openly gay. People weren't having it. TV network series refused to air the episode. But today, we look at Ellen as one of the most popular TV show hosts. Uh, we know that she likes to kind of dance a little bit as she's going up on stage. And she just happens to be gay. 
That's intimacy. So sure, it works for businesses, uh, small and big, and sure, it works for individual artists and entrepreneurs, uh, but what if you don't want to be an entrepreneur? What if you just want to be the best performer at what it is that you do? Does it still matter to you? The answer is yes. In 2012, Google set out to build the perfect team. They spent millions and millions of dollars measuring every aspect of an employee and their lives. They studied over 180 teams. They measured over 250 team attributes. And they studied over a half century of studies about how teams perform well together. Unfortunately, though, they still didn't know what the answer was. That is until they considered some intangibles. Google's data found that psychological safety was the number one most important thing for teams in order to perform well. And what is that? A Harvard business professor, Amy Edmondson, describes psychological safety as interpersonal trust, mutual respect, and the, the comfortability of a person to be themselves. But they still didn't know how to produce this into a working environment. That is until Matt Sakaguchi came into the picture. Now, Matt Sakaguchi was anything but your typical Google employee. He didn't have a background in engineering. In fact, 20 years earlier, he was a member of the SWAT team in California. But he had a team that was unhappy, and so he invited them to an off-site meeting and wanted them to answer personal questions. He said, I'll start first. One thing that I don't think people know about me, Matt said, is that I have stage four cancer. Everybody went silent. No one knew what to say. They had been working with Matt for 10 months and nobody knew he was dealing with this. Then finally someone spoke up and she talked about her health issues. And then another man spoke up and he talked about the issues he was having with his relationship. And when they went back to work, they found it easy to get over the problems that they were having in business because they were simple. What Matt and Google found out is the same thing that we've always known. And that is the same behavior that creates psychological safety is that which creates human bonds. And that human bonds are just as important as work as they are anywhere else. In fact, they're more often more important. Because people don't want to go to work and have to put on a work face. They don't want to leave a part of the personality at home. They want to be themselves. They want to be seen, and they want to be allowed to see into other people. So I'd like to leave you with this. If your business is looking to become better, if you're an artist looking to make a name for yourself, or you just want to become the best performer that you possibly can, consider that intimacy as a missing link. And think back to Wilson. People are screaming for intimacy. Do you see them? Or more importantly, are you allowing them to see into you? Thank you.